we're going to finish up with a little bit of the um, common things that we see every day, hypertension and coronary and cholesterol. Hypertension, again, probably the most common diagnosis we see in the office, somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. Um, we can make the diagnosis. If you look at some of the studies that suggest we've got that diagnosis, we pick up about 75 percent of those patients, um, but we don't get patients to go more than about half to maybe um, 30 percent of the time. And why do we do that? Well, we know that hypertensive therapy decreases stroke risk, kidney disease, and MI, and the numbers are there. Um, the concept here is if you're greater than 20, or every greater elevation of blood pressure, 20 over 10, it increases the cardiovascular risk. And if you've got it above goal at that, they probably want to look at two-drug two therapy, and we'll talk about that. Um, JNC7 is currently out, and JNC8 is in, is in process, um, so there may be some changes and recommendations, but um, we looked at, used to say 140 over 90 was good enough, and when we look at that curves for cardiovascular risk, that's where the curve takes off. It's not where there's no risk. Um, so every increment um, of 20 over 10 doubles the cardiovascular risk, beginning at 115 over 75. So if, you're, if, you, if you do that math, that's a 125 over 85. And most would say, oh, that's probably normal. It's not. Your cardiovascular risk is doubled. Um, and the other good take-home news as I approach 55 is that we have a 90% chance of developing hypertension. Now I have to look forward to my Medicare physical, and I have to look forward to hypertension. JNC7 was actually at least recognizing that the clinician is important. And I, and I, so it says that paramount in the therapy is what does the patient want, what's the patient able to tolerate, and, and the clinician judgment. Um, so we don't necessarily follow a cookbook, but we actually look at what's tailored to the patient. And we want to look at, as I said, we, awareness. About 75% of our patients know they have high blood pressure, and we probably treat about half of those, maybe 60%. So we say, well, you know, it's 142 over 88. Eh, maybe we can get by with that. Um, and about a third of our patients are actually at control. Um, there is a comment to be made on the white coat hypertension. If somebody comes in and always has elevated blood pressure in the office, but if you do some ambulatory monitoring and they're not as hypertensive as they are, office, they're not out of the woods. The studies look at they're an intermediate risk, that these patients are telling you that they may not necessarily be hypertensive all the time, but they're at increased risk for hypertension, and you want to watch them. Um, and you'll find that if you're really concerned about this, you want to look at ambulatory blood pressure monitoring because that does have lifestyle implications. If you label somebody as hypertensive, you just increase their life insurance and health insurance risks. Our goal here is looking at targets of end organ damage, heart, brain, kidney. And we'd, we'd really like to um, identify those patients that are at risk and treat accordingly. <clears throat> Some of the, the other causes that you have to now become a detective um, for hypertension, um, one of them is sleep apnea. Up to 30% of patients with sleep apnea are hypertensive, and the treatment isn't giving them three drug regimen. It may be getting their OSA treated, and their blood pressure comes back down. And some of the most spectacular patients I've taken care of, a lady that we came in in florid congestive heart failure. We're talking 75 pounds of fluid. We're talking her legs were edematous to the point of weeping. And, um, and her hypertension was not controlled on four drugs. We actually did a sleep study. She was profoundly OSA. They almost traked her at the University of Michigan right then and there. Instead, she got on a CPAP. She lost 75 pounds of fluid.